Okay, so the problem we face now is what is the calculus of the exponential function, the natural exponential function? And to get at that, let's review what the calculus of the natural logarithm is. So the antiderivative of 1 over x is the parameterized family natural log of x plus parameterized by any constant. We could add any constant and still get an antiderivative of 1 over x. And so the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, for x being positive where it's defined. That's the domain of the natural log. All right. Now, it's worth our while to look at what the chain rule says about this. What if we have the natural log acting on a function of x? Well, then the derivative with respect to x gives me the outer function being the natural log gives me 1 over the inner function times the derivative of the inner function with respect to x. And we're going to use that. So, let's look at an equation, a simple equation that involves the natural exponential function. Okay, and what I want to do right off the bat, so we've got y equals e to the x, is I want to take the inverse function of both sides. e to the x is always positive, so I can take the natural log of x and it makes sense. All right, and I'll do that. So I've got the natural log of y uh, equals the natural log of e to the x. And what is the natural log of e to the x? Well, these are inverses, so I get x. So I'm actually going to rewrite that one more time right here. And I'm in Mathematica here. This is the presentation mode. So I want you to get used to seeing how you write things in Mathematica. Uh, these are not commands to actually run stuff. This is just uh, for writing mathematics. So I've got ln of y equals x. Now, let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Now's the time. So we're going to use something called implicit differentiation. It really is a big word applied to. We've got an equation. It's not set up in functional form. Y equals something with respect to x. And we're still going to take the derivative with respect to x, which just means over here we have to use the chain rule. So I'll take a little bit so you can think about that. We're going to use the chain rule. So think about that. So we've got d dx on this side, and over here we got d dx on this side. Okay, so what do we get? Well, um, over here we're going to have chain rule. Over here it's actually easy to write down what we get. We're going to get what's the derivative of x with respect to x? Well, its rate of change is 1. So now over here we have to use chain rule because y is a function of x. So it's going to be 1 over y. That's the derivative of the natural log part. So we get 1 over y times the derivative of the inside part with respect to x. We'll just write y prime to help us out there. Okay. Now remember, y is always positive, so that 1 over y doesn't bother me. I'll multiply both sides by y, and what do I get? I get y prime is equal to y. Now y prime is what we're looking for. That's dy dx. Because dy dx, if you'll look right here, d, dy dx is e to the x. So we'll get the derivative of e to the x. Well it says dy dx is equal to y. Which is what? Well it's almost magic. It's almost magic. But it's beautiful regardless. It's e to the x. So what have we shown? We've shown that the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x. And thus the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x plus any constant. Now, um, that's wonderful. There's only one other function whose derivative is the function back. You think about what that is. Well, only one other function you know of, or anyone knows of, whose derivative gives you back what you started with. What? Jonah, did you hear what I just said? Yes, Dad. Oh, it turns out there's lots of functions that have this property, but there's a very simple one that you can think of that uh, uh, when you take its derivative, it gives you back that function. And there's a way of writing the whole writing, huh, writing the whole family of functions that have this property that includes that simple function you can think of, that includes the natural uh, exponential function. Uh, matter of fact, most of the time it has the natural exponential function. And if you listen to this next section, uh, and think about k being 1, you might figure it out, okay? And if you can't, well, it's good to have problems. It's all right. Now, having said that, I want to just point out one big thing that this turns out to be really, really important. 
and it's the following sentence. Sometimes we face situations like bacteria, like radiation, like uh, population growth in general, where the rate of growth of something is proportional to how big it is. Oh, money in a compound interest account. The rate of growth is proportional to its size. And let's think about how you would write that as an equation. You would say, okay, then the rate of change of that thing, y, with respect to time, is some constant times y. Well, the solution to that equation, that looks a lot like what we just saw. The solution to that equation is an exponential function, some constant e to the kt. If you take the derivative of that, you get ck e to the kt. That's what that above equation says, and that's the first thing you'll learn in differential equations. So that means anytime anyone says we have exponential growth here, either one, they just mean it's growing fast and they don't really know what it means, or they mean two, that the rate of growth of whatever they're looking at is proportional to its size, and thus the solution to the differential equation that goes along with that sentence is the exponential function. Beautiful stuff. Hope you agree.